Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. Yeah! Today, in this video, we are going to explain the process of oxidation and reduction in a chemical reaction. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit. First thing we are going to do, we are going to determine the oxidation state for an atom in any element, ion, or compound. Numero dos. We are going to identify the species being oxidized or reduced in a redox reaction. Numero three. We are going to write the oxidation or reduction half reaction given the complete balanced redox reaction. Ooh. Okay, this video sounds like it's gonna be really difficult because these two new terms, oxidation, reduction, those two terms are, wants you to find them pretty easy things. So let's get started. Yes! <laughs> Let me introduce you to my good friend Leo and what Leo says is <laughs> that's right if you can get to know leo and understand what leo says this unit is gonna be a breeze so you get to make a new friend this unit and his name is leo you and leo can just grr back and forth at one another and have a great time. Okay, so to start this unit, we need to recognize that many chemical reactions involve the transfer of electrons between atoms or ions. Reactions where electrons are transferred from one atom to another are called oxidation reduction reactions. They are also known as redox reactions for short. Now, that sounds really scary. Oxidation and reduction, scary sounding words, but really, what we mean is, if something is oxidized, that it is losing electrons. Conversely, if something is reduced, we say that it has gained electrons. So these really scary terms, oxidation, reduction, they just mean, are you losing electrons or are you gaining electrons? Hence, Leo says grr. Hey, what's up, Leo, man? How's it going? What's going on with you, huh? Huh? What's up? What's up? Okay, so as you take a look at the animation that's about to happen on your screen, we have got some oxygen that we're gonna react with some iron. Here we go. Oh my goodness, <gasps> transfer of electrons. Something's losing, something's gaining. So exciting, oxidation reduction redox. And that's all it is. Okay, so as we study oxidation reduction reactions or redox reactions, we need to keep in mind something called oxidation numbers also called oxidation states. They mean the same thing. But these are numbers that we are going to assign to atoms or ions, and in an ionic compound, those oxidation numbers are the charges that the atom actually has, or the ion actually has, in an ionic compound. It's a little trickier when it's in a covalent compound, but basically they just, again, represent the charge that the atom would have if the compound were ionic. So we're gonna use these oxidation numbers to determine essentially what is oxidized. In other words, what is losing electrons and what is reduced or what is gaining electrons in a redox reaction. Now we often write them above or below each of the elements in a chemical reaction, sort of just to keep track of what is going on. What is losing electrons, what is gaining electrons. Bah, I lost an electron. Are you positive? <laughs> Oh man. Okay, now there are some rules that we have to follow when assigning oxidation numbers. Um, and we're going to follow these rules in order of priority. In other words, do the first one first before you do the second one. But a lot of these rules you'll find you're already very familiar with and they make a lot of sense. First, we're gonna say that free elements have an oxidation state of zero. Zero. So we think about the elements before they have formed a bond essentially, before they've lost or gained electrons. And so we will say things like sodium will have an oxidation number of zero and chlorine, again, be careful here with your diatomics, also will have an oxidation state of zero. Rule numero dos. Monatomic ions have an oxidation state equal to their charge. So if you have a sodium ion in solution, its oxidation number is gonna be plus one. It has already lost one electron. Chloride ions are gonna have an oxidation number of negative one. It has gained one electron. Rule number three. Group 1A metals have an oxidation state of plus one in all of their compounds. So for example, sodium will have a plus one charge in sodium chloride. Again, no new news here. Rule number four, all group 2A metals have an oxidation state of plus two in all of their compounds. So for example, in magnesium chloride, magnesium will have an oxidation number of plus two. 
Again, none of this should be new. Periodic table. Rule number five. When we start working with compounds then, non-metals will have oxidation states according to the following table. Uh, and again, non-metals higher on this table that we're about to see will take priority. And you've got this table in your notes, so be sure to reference it. But as you look at this table, notice, oh my goodness, it follows the, period, the trend that we just saw on the periodic table. Periodic table! It is important to note that you will assign them in order of this priority that you see though. And rule number six, the sum of the oxidation states of all of the atoms in a neutral compound is zero. So for an ionic compound, very straightforward there, sodium is plus one, chlorine is minus one, the sum of those numbers is zero. And rule number seven, the sum of all the oxidation states or oxidation numbers of the atoms in a polyatomic ion equals the charge on that ion. Now, here's where you may begin to feel a little uncomfortable about the newness of oxidation numbers and why, for example, we're assigning the oxidation number of nitrogen a positive five here. Oxygen seems pretty straightforward, negative two, but why nitrogen positive five? It comes back to that table of priority. Boom. You use this from top to bottom. So we will assign the negative two oxidation state to oxygen first. And since we have three oxygens all with a negative two oxidation state, the nitrogen must have an oxidation state of plus five so that the sum of plus five and three times negative two is negative one, which is the charge of our ion. And if you are freaking out, don't. We'll do a little bit of practice in another video. Okay, so how are you gonna tell whether or not a reaction is a redox reaction? How are you gonna tell whether something has lost electrons or gained electrons? Well, you simply have to write the oxidation number for each of the elements in the reaction using the rules that we just outlined. If a substance has been oxidized or lost electrons, its oxidation number will become more positive. All right, so let's go back to this thriller of an animation. Initially, my iron, which is an element, will have an oxidation state of zero. Oxygen, also in its elemental state, will have an oxidation number of zero. But then the magic happens. Reaction, chemical change. Oh, they lose electrons, they gain electrons the oxidation numbers have changed. The oxidation number of oxygen is gonna be minus two, and the oxidation number of iron is gonna be plus three. So the thing that has been oxidized here is iron. It is the thing that lost electron. Similarly, if you have a substance that's been reduced or gained electrons, it will have an oxidation number that becomes more negative. Okay, and then just the last couple of things here, often you will be asked to identify the half reactions to more clearly illustrate the process of oxidation and reduction. And in those half reactions, you will see electrons being either gained or lost, and we will write them using the symbol with the little E with a little superscript of the negative. So for example, as you take a look at your notes, as you take a look at the screen in front of you there, we've got a redox reaction where something is losing electrons, oxidized, something gains electrons, reduced. So the oxidation half reaction here is gonna focus on just the thing that is losing electrons. So you'll see zinc forming the zinc ion and two electrons that it lost. The reduction half reaction on the other hand is gonna show the iron ion gaining two electrons to form solid iron. Notice with the half reactions that you'll see in the oxidation half reaction, the electrons on the product side. With the reduction half reaction, you'll see those electrons on the reactant side. And then lastly, keep in mind that these two things have to happen simultaneously at the same time. In order for one atom to gain electrons, something else must have lost them. And so to say goodbye, here comes Leo. We'll see you guys later. Bye, Leo. All right, so check the info beneath the video for some of those amazing references. If you're looking for the reference of who drew Leo, that would be yours truly. Uh, I am a pretty talented artist.